Hey, my name is Milan, I'm a software architect and Microsoft MVP, and in this video I'm going to talk about API versioning for your ASP.NET Core controllers. I'll show you how you can integrate API versioning into controllers, and then I'll try to convince you why you should not be using API versioning to evolve your APIs, but more on that as we move into the video. I'm going to use this sample products API application to demonstrate how to integrate API versioning into your controllers. I'll be using EF Core with the in-memory provider, and I'm going to seed some data when the application starts so that we actually have something to work with. Now, the seeder itself is just going to hard code a couple of products into my in-memory store and persist them when the application starts. Now, if we take a look at the products controller, it exposes a couple of endpoints, and the most interesting ones are get product v1, which is going to execute a query using the EF Core database context and return a product response v1 object. This is a simple representation of the product resource that contains the ID, name, price, and currency. Now, let's say our business requirements change, as is usually the case, and we need to introduce more information into the product response. So we then decide to evolve the product response from the version 1 representation into the version 2 representation. And you can see that this is somewhat different. It contains a details category and metadata property where these properties are now complex objects. And if we take a look at them, they can also contain other nested objects inside. So the entire structure that we are now returning from this endpoint starts to become significantly more complex, both from a development perspective, because we have to manage this mapping somehow in our code. And from a consumer perspective, now our clients need to take into account that we no longer return a flat list of properties, and instead we are returning some objects that contain the information that's required. So if I go back to the product controller, this is implemented in the get product v2 endpoint, and it looks something like this. There is a decently complex mapping in my link statement, which returns the respected result object, and then we return that from the endpoint. Now let's take a moment to understand what the actual differences between these two representations are. So this is what a product version 1 representation looks like. It's a simple object with a couple of properties. Of course, this is the JSON representation. So then we want to evolve this into the version 2 representation, which is significantly more complicated. And you can see that we have a new details property with a nested pricing object and an availability object, as well as a category object and a metadata object with some info of when the product was created and what is the current version of the product. So if we just update our API to suddenly return a version 2 representation, we're going to break any clients that depend on the existing old implementation because we renamed the properties that we are using. So we are risking breaking some UI applications or any other integrations that are using our API. So how do we solve this problem? Well, somehow the industry standard has become, let's just slap API versioning on this. And I am going to demonstrate how to do this next, but keep in mind that this may not be the best possible solution. Nonetheless, let's see how to integrate API versioning into our .NET application. To start, we'll have to install a couple of NuGet packages, and the prefix that you are looking for is ASP.versioning. You'll see a couple of libraries with some 50 million downloads, and the ones that you want to be using for controllers are going to be ASP versioning MVC. So I'm going to install the latest version, and I'm also going to install ASP versioning MVC API Explorer. This is useful if you're generating an open API document with something like Swagger or the newer open API support that we have built in to .NET. If you're using minimal APIs, then just using ASP versioning HTTP is going to be enough. So with these two libraries, is installed. I'll go back to my program file and now I can introduce a couple of services that we are going to need to support API versioning. So I'm first going to say add API versioning and we want to pass in a delegate to configure the API versioning options. This is where we can set up some sensible default values for our API, such as setting the default API version. You can do this by creating a new API version instance and pass in the default version. Let's say the default is going to be version one. Sometimes it's possible that that our clients are not going to specify the API version either on purpose or because they're not aware that they should be using this. So we can also set this property called assume default version when unspecified to true. And this is going to take care of this edge case. Then we can also set report API versions to true, 
and this is going to return the supported API versions for a specific endpoint in the response headers. I'm going to demonstrate this when we test out our implementation. Then the next thing you want is to set up an API version reader. And this is what's going to configure which type of API versioning you're going to use. This library supports four types of API versioning. The default one, and probably the most popular one, is the URL segment versioning approach, where the API version is part of the URL itself. Then we can also specify the API version in a header, and we can customize the header name. We can also specify this as a query string parameter and specify the name of this parameter. And lastly, there's also support for media type versioning where we can configure which API version we want to use based on the media type that we send to the API. Now, this last approach, even though it's the most complex one and the least used one, is probably the most restful approach when it comes to API versioning. Now, if you want to learn more about building REST APIs and what are the current best practices, you can check out my course called Pragmatic REST APIs. I'm going to leave the link to it in the and comment under this video. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to be combining the API version strategies. Instead, I'm just going to use the URL segment version reader because this one is going to be the easiest to demonstrate. Now there are some other properties that you can also set on this object. However, they are not as important, so I'm going to omit them. And then the next method you want to call is add MBC. This adds support for controllers with API versioning. And this is why we installed the specific library earlier. Lastly, I'm going to add the API Explorer, and this is mostly required if you want to use this with OpenAPI. I'm just going to drop in some values. The group name format is going to determine how we are going to specify the API version in our routes, and substitute API version in URL is just going to give us the concrete version in OpenAPI. Now, to make this work with Swagger, you will need a couple of more settings. I covered that in a different video, which I'm going to mention in the video description. Now, another thing you can set here is configure the API version selector, which comes with a couple of default options. There's the constant API version selector, the current implementation, default API lowest implementation, and the lowest implemented API version selector. These are going to determine which API version gets picked up. This option can also be valuable when you want to determine what the correct API version is. Now I am going to omit this and this is the setup that I'm going to use. Now if we go into the product controller, how we enable versioning here is by defining the supported API versions. And I'm going to say that we support API versions one and two, and we can also update our API to include the API version in the route. So we don't want to hard code V1 or V2 here. Instead, we can specify the API version as a route parameter. And this is how you can specify the API version together with our route constraint. Now, when it comes to the specific endpoints, we can explicitly configure which API version they belong to using the map to API version attribute. So on the controllers, I'm going to map the respective endpoints to version one or version two. So with this in place, I can start my API and open up the products API HTTP file. And if I send a request to the version one endpoint, you'll see that we are going to get back a response. If I take a look at the response headers, you can notice that there is now an API supported versions header that contains versions one and two, just as we configured it. If I send a request to the version two endpoint, we'll get the updated and more complex response. And also in the response headers, you can see API supported versions containing one and two. Now we can also customize this to deprecate the older versions, let's say deprecated, and we set this to true, and let's restart the API. And if I go back to the HTTP file and send a request, you can see that we do get back a response, but we're being explicit that version one of this API is now deprecated, and the supported version is version two. So we may expect at some time in the future that version one be removed. For the version two request, you will see that the same headers are present in the response. So that's the gist of how you can configure API versioning in your controllers. If you want to grab the complete source code for this video and all of my other videos that I ever published on this channel, you can do so by supporting me on Patreon. The link to that is also going to be in the description of this video. Now let's talk a bit about API versioning and why you might not want to use it. It's natural and expected that we may want to evolve our APIs. Functionality is constantly being added or removed, business rules are constantly changing, representations of our resources are evolving over time, and the consensus is that we should just add versioning to it, right? Well, maybe not. Here's what Roy Fielding, the creator of REST, has to say when asked about API versioning and if we should use it, his response was simply don't. Now, this doesn't really explain why you should not be using API versioning, but let me try to be brief. There's a better approach called API change management, and I'll try to explain what it is and how it's different from just versioning your URL. 
URLs. The default approach to API versioning is fundamentally flawed. We can't really delete old versions of our API without breaking clients. Also, maintaining old versions has a cost. We have to spend some time on them, make sure that any bugs that we discover are also fixed in the older API versions, and having multiple paths in your code represented by multiple API versions makes your code harder to understand. So the idea is to never version your API. Instead, you're going to be extending the API. Now, to do this, we have to respect a couple of rules. We can't remove anything from our API. We can't change the business rules. We can't make any optional things required. And anything that's new that we introduce to the API has to be optional. So I want you to spend a moment to think about this and try to understand how this can be a better approach to explicitly versioning your APIs. Now, sometimes we really can't avoid breaking changes. So if we can't version our API, then what options do we have? So if we have to change the API specifically because of a different business rule, then we can introduce a new resource, a new endpoint that we are going to want our API clients to migrate to. If we want to change our representation of the resource that we are returning from our endpoint, then we can use something like content negotiation to tell the API which representation of the resource we want to use while we are still calling the same API endpoint or URL. Now, even with this approach, we need to maintain our API as we are evolving it. So in due time, we can mark all resource versions as deprecated. We have to clearly communicate the deprecation plan to our clients and we can monitor which clients are using our older versions, try to understand why that is the case and try to help them to move to the new representations that they should be using. In due time, we can remove the old versions from our API completely and then we have successfully managed to update our API without resorting to explicit API versioning. Now, to give you an example of what this might look like in our demo using the product response, here is what the old response might look like. So if we follow the rule that we can't really remove anything, then we would simply have to keep the old representation of this resource present in our new representation. So this is the part highlighted in red. And then we can just include the new properties highlighted in green as part of the response. So we would be duplicating some data and returning that as our representation. And then we want to communicate with our clients that the old representation, the one marked in red, is going to be removed at some point. So they should update their integrations to use the new representation represented in green. So that is how we can solve this problem without really having to use API versioning. But I want to hear it from you. Let me know in the comments what you think about API change management. And if you want to learn more about it, I also cover this in my Pragmatic REST API course. If you want to see how you can make API versioning work with OpenAPI and Swagger, then take a look at this video next where I cover this from scratch. Make sure to smash the like button under this video. Check out my courses if you want to improve your software architecture skills. And until next time, stay awesome.